Good afternoon. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. This is Transitional Justice. Today, we're going to talk about uh, Ubuntu with Ara Haleo. Uh, she joins us from Vienna. Hi, Ara. Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you for this opportunity to be here with you. Ah, thank you for being here. So tell us a little about yourself. Uh, you're with Project Expedite Justice, but what's your schooling? What's your orientation? What have you done and what are you doing now? Uh, yes, I am Palestinian from Nazareth. Um, I, I am in Vienna for my uh, uh, studies and I am working on Project Expedite Justice on Ethiopia project. Uh, and um, that's what I'm doing now. We work uh, uh, with the people in Africa uh, and so on. So why are you uh, in Vienna? Well, I'm in Vienna. I'm doing my PhD in Indigenous Rights, so Indigenous Legal Studies. Uh, so I'm in Vienna for this reason. Um, uh, yeah. Is it true that uh, the best uh, cold white wine in the world is in Vienna? It is good. <laughs> they have a nice, a nice white wines, <laughs> but I can't <laughs> say white wine at all. There's also a lot of good music in Vienna, am I right? It depends on your taste again. It's like they, they are good in their classical music. You have Beethoven living here, Mozart being here. So in regard to classical music, it's one of the best places. And these are one of the two big names, the big names, but it depends on your taste. So I don't like pop Austrian music is not a um, big uh, thing, I think. <laughs> well, so we're going to talk today about Ubuntu, which is, uh, requires a little definition. It's a philosophy. Um, it's a way of looking at things in, in Africa, mostly Southern Africa. And I want to know how that connects with your PhD in Vienna. <laughs> As I said before, my PhD is in indigenous rights, um, but Ubuntu is more a matter of uh, in having interest in, interest in it. I am uh, researching marine indigenous, uh, marine dependent indigenous people, uh, but uh, I uh, like indigenous wisdom and indigenous philosophy. It's, it's something of uh, it's an interest of mine, um, and I was always. Um, as many people fascinated and interested uh, on uh, the South African struggle against apartheid uh, uh, and uh, the people related to it. Uh, uh, and one of these people is uh, Desmond Tutu. Uh, and with him passing away on December 26, um, it was a chance to look again uh, about uh, this person's legacy and the way he influenced South Africa. Um, he was an archbishop and he was the chair of um, the truth and uh, speaking of transitional justice today, uh, the chair of appointed by Mandela to be the chair of the truth and reconciliation commission. And he was brilliant to bring this Ubuntu uh, and use it uh, uh, in this commission. Um, and as an archbishop, he gave it also a Christian interpretation. And you see how indigenous philosophy and moral perspective, like Ubuntu, was interpreted from Christian perspective. And it was also, um, Christianity was also interpreted through Ubuntu. So there is interconnection here. And what he says, like with Ubuntu, Ubuntu means that you are because of who we are. And there's this interconnectedness. Your humanity is related to other people's humanities. And you are subhuman if you are not connected to the community affected by it and who you are because of your interaction with the community. So he took this um, moral perspective, this uh, way of thinking and brought it to the uh, commission uh, and said that your humanity is related also to the perpetrator's humanity. And when you come to the commission uh, and um, um, uh, forgive this perpetrator's perpetrator, you actually give him the chance and open for him the way 
to regret and to be back again and being part of society. So we see how this amount of philosophy was uh, complementing actually Christianity and shared some, some kind of values. So he was brilliant enough to bring this local indigenous uh, wisdom, beliefs, uh, way of thinking. And in this way, he also was able to touch a deeper place with the people involved and so on. So Ubuntu eventually means we are who we I am who I am because of who we are. And this interconnectedness is supposed to drive people to a more um, a whole, human wholeness and to, to, to another way of uh, humanity that we aim to all of us. So this is Ubuntu. Yes, okay, that's, uh, that's, a, that's helpful to start, but uh, you know, um, it sounds like Ubuntu is an indigenous philosophy in Africa, particularly Southern Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, um, and especially South Africa, um, that it wasn't originally connected with Christianity. Uh, maybe the bishop um, did, a, did his, his part to connect it with Christianity, um, and it is forgiving. Um, it is, it is uh, kind and gentle. Um, it is perfect for a, a truth and reconciliation panel. It was the perfect um, addition, uh, the perfect um, model for the truth and, rec and, and uh, reconciliation panel to, to follow. Um, what I, I don't understand is exactly how Christianity gets in there, because you could have Ubuntu, Ubuntu without Christianity at all. It's an African philosophical phenomenon, isn't it? Yes, you can say one thing in many ways. And um, it can be said, like when you talk about interconnectedness and a, a humanity a, and the interrelation, like you being um, um, affected and becoming who you are as a, loss, as, as a result of interaction with other people. Um, it can be said through this African um, uh, philosophy. It can be said also through other, uh, in other ways, in other cultures, but eventually it's the same essence. Um, Desmond Tutu was, uh, he said it, and when, when an archbishop comes and look at this, if, look at it and give it this uh, Christian package too, so in this way it became related to, to Christianity too. Uh, and it can be said alone through indigenous philosophy, but it can also be said through African kind of Christianity that is more to um, uh, 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 past and represented, and actually was able to touch the feelings of the Christian people in the commission, in addition to the feeling of the African people in the commission. And this way also we knew it, talk to the people from their way of seeing things, from what they feel, from their values, you are also able to uh, facilitate and uh, move uh, these people and do this change that happened through this transition of justice in the, in the commission. So he was uh, a bishop. Um, he was a what, Catholic bishop uh, in South Africa. Um, uh, is there a large contingent of Catholic South Africans? Is that a, a substantial part of the population? In South Africa, yes, uh, there is. Um, but uh, yes, people are, he was asked actually, they thought about it in the commission. Uh, and one of the ladies who uh, was with him in this commission, they thought whether they want to give this uh, uh, you know, he's coming with his religious uh, gown and uh, coming to the commission, and he's a very uh, a dominant person uh, in South Africa and so on. And they, they ask themselves whether they want to give the commission uh, this Christian um, uh, um, way or Christian uh, settings or package. And he said, this is what the people want. So it is also a... a, a, a it is very uh, related to what the people want and their way of seeing things and so on. So it, it is also interrelations between two things. You cannot um, separate uh, the, the culture 
in, in one area and the indigenous culture, indigenous wisdom and the values, cultural values, and also the religion when it comes to specific culture, uh, it is interpreted through this culture also. So you have uh, some kind of uh, uh, common interrelation affecting the way uh, people think and feel and so on. So, um, you know, uh, it, I know that the principles are harmony, peace, uh, kindness, all those, uh, you know, very positive values. Um, but it's, it's, it's something like, as you said, uh, I, uh, I am, I am me, but I am also part of a greater community. Uh, I am defined by my connectedness to the greater community. And I cannot be a good me uh, without being connected to the greater community. This, this all speaks of peace and tranquility, tranquility of respect for your fellow person, your fellow human being. It, it speaks of the, the highest um, moral order. Um, and yet, um, we, don't, we don't find that all over Africa. Uh, we find uh, in Central Africa, we find coups. We find military hunters, we find genocides, we find, you. I'm sure you're fully aware of the violations of human rights and atrocities and war crimes. Um, how, do you, how do you connect up Ubuntu with that? Well, we always have our moral standards and we try to get to there. Um, to, to achieve it, and reality can be uh, much more uh, complicated uh, and driven by uh, different interests and so on. Uh, so eventually, this is what this moral perspective aim to, uh, but it's not necessarily that we are able to get there. Uh, but with, with, with leaders like Desmond Tutu uh, uh, and uh, his ability to read what might be used and affect like this, uh, uh, how you can lead uh, a society out of its trauma and to, to go on and uh, live together after uh, uh, the apartheid uh, regime and atrocities, he was able to do this. Um, so you, we don't always have, and this is his brilliance too, uh, uh, so we don't always have leaders who are able to read uh, what's going on in the society, uh, to, to understand it, to understand what the people need, what the people want, uh, and to make them focus on uh, uh, the good thing out of them and how they can uh, take it. So this is my um, answer as far as I can answer your question. You know, that's a hard, I, it wasn't an easy question for sure. Um, and now, now Bishop uh, Tutu, um, he actually, um, he was advocating for Ubuntu in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that he was member of. Um, and um, I just wonder if that was successful. It Was it successful either on the commission in terms of finding forgiveness, right? Because Ubuntu really speaks of forgiveness on a personal level uh, and on a community level too. Um, was he successful in advocating for Ubuntu uh, in South Africa in general? How do people see him, uh, see his legacy uh, as contributing to the, uh, you know, the, what do you call them, philosophical uh, evolution of South Africa? When you look, when we talk about transitional justice, uh, it's usually you look at sometimes in, in some instances you have half of the population is somehow related to the perpetrator and the other half is related to the victim. And you have to find a way to help this society move on together and uh, from this uh, uh, trauma they went through and live together as a society. Uh, so one needs to ask what are the alternatives that were there? Th that is one question that you have to ask. And whether a um, conventional uh, um, uh, justice perspective such as court and the proceedings can help this, uh, uh, this society heal, uh, clean the wounds and move on. Uh, and I think it's a very uh, 
costly process. When we talk about the transitional justice, uh, the committee, the commission in, in South Africa, they heard 22,000 testimonies, and it was uh, broadcasted in public TV. So, so all the people could be part of this uh, process um, and see what's going on. So, so if if people were uh, indicted and you had to seek the legal truth, uh, usually don't which is which differs from objective truth, it can be very traumatic to the victim because in many instances you cannot prove what actually happened. And these witnesses will have to, might be also more traumatized in the, um, by, by testifying, uh, cross-examined and so on. And eventually the people will be acquitted and you will not know the truth. So amnesty and also these committees enabled um, the people to know or to get closer to, to, to the truth and what happened and let the truth kind of free them as much as possible. So the alternative is very costly. It can also um, further fragment the society uh, uh, and polarize it and eventually not uh, uh, seek the goals of transitional uh, uh, of such commissions. Uh, so that's one thing, speaking about like and then when you look at the community and you know the people who are there as we said before uh, and you can uh, they can relate to what's going on from their world view from their culture and so on so you have much more impactful um uh, results and you might might in most of these cases as i said 22,000 testimonies um, and uh, be able to, 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 to know what happened. And many victims actually were able to, to know what happened like with, with people who uh, uh, were, were murdered uh, during this uh, upper tight period and they would never have this option to know what happened unless you had this, uh, this committee. Um, so retrospectively, if you examine it and knowing that the other, what the, altern of the other alternatives can provide, I think this meant to, to and uh, and it's for sure. As I said, you heard twenty-two thousand testimonies, so you have lots of critics about it. And some people would say, okay, that helped people um, run away from uh, punishment. Uh, that that helped people. And some others would say, okay, it's uh, you can't force people to to forgive. And many people were not content with it. But in the sum. And looking retrospectively on it, I think it was a huge success, and it made and Desmond Tutu is actually a very appreciated for it. And when you look at it today, I think it's brilliant. And these elements of alternative ways to of conflict resolution and so on are more acknowledged in the last two decades. Decades also in criminal justice systems when you're talking about people who uh, need to have a continuous relationship, such as family disputes, or when we are talking about juvenile, uh, just like criminal justice related to juvenile, when you see that this person can be changed and you get him to meet with his victim and try to uh, get him back to society and to be part of society. So, uh, and you have also more doubts about the conventional uh, criminal justice system. So I think it's from a different perspective and different uh, uh, ways looking at it. Uh, I think uh, it is something that you need to appreciate this tutorial about. Yeah, well, okay. I mean, even, even if you only have a certain percentage of people actually actively, personally forgiving uh, the atrocities, that's, 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 that's better than having nobody forgive the atrocities. So, so th that leaves um, a good result, I'd say. And, and, and we'd all agree that uh, Bishop Tutu had a lot to do with that result. And if he was uh, driven and uh, embraced uh, Ubuntu, uh, then Ubuntu had a certain influence on that result. Uh, I take all of that, but here's a question. <clears throat> so you have a Truth and Reconciliation Commission that is charged with, um, you know, trying to find out what happened, to explain to people who may have been involved on both sides of the coin what really happened. It's um, it's valuable in the sense of uh, 
you know, evoking forgiveness. This is not only in South Africa, it's in other places in Africa, for sure, and the world, I think. Um, but, but it has a defined life. In other words, it's not going to go on forever. Uh, it's going to end. And uh, certainly the one in South Africa ended. So what happens after a Truth and Reconciliation Commission, however successful, ends? Um, is that a satisfactory result or uh, are there issues that are left over um, that need to be addressed later on? Do we have to have more than one given truth and uh, reconciliation commission to deal with a, a period in which so many people uh, were, were injured and, and killed? Like you have to move on and look forward and, and try to build and develop. And if we're talking about uh, what, what, like, if, if talking about, if talking in language of trauma and, uh, and w when community has a collective trauma and so on, you, you need to find a way to get out of it. And I think in South Africa and look forward uh, and try to clean the wounds and look forward. You can't relive it and stay there uh, forever. Uh, memory is good and memorials are good. Um, and as Simone Veil said, destruction of the past is the worst of all crimes. But in order to go out from such a trauma uh, and move on, uh, you have to uh, look forward and see how you can get these people living in one community and find the common things uh, together uh, and to have a, a just policy and a, a, a governments enable living together in a just way uh, and so on. So it's a process that it's, it has to be continued in another way, not in another truth of community, but uh, in, in uh, government policies, uh, uh, recognizing the need uh, to live together in a fair way and respectful, uh, respectful to the human rights of the people, uh, to their um, uh, culture, values, and it always to take out the, the good things through these policies. And it depends on eventually on the governments that comes afterwards. Um, even Desmond Tutu had his critiques on the Af South African government later, um, and things didn't go the way he wanted. So I hope I was able to answer your question. Yes, I, uh, yes, absolutely. And, and so um, if, I, if I want to avail myself of the Ubuntu philosophy now, today, 2022, um, if I am concerned, for example, that we may be slipping back in some ways and I want to reconnect with Ubuntu, um, whether it's um, through Christianity or through, you know, the indigenous appreciation of it, how do I do that? Is there a an organization, a church on the corner, somebody I can call or write to? Is there a group? Um, how, how, how does it exist? How is it made available to me? How does it affect my community in South Africa? Um, I think we can talk more about, actually, it was interesting to see how uh, these South African uh, anti-apartheid activists uh, were able to resist also for uh, to 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 to, uh, to have solidarity with other oppressed people in the world, uh, and saying they are their freedom is part of our freedom, their humanity is part of our humanity. Uh, and as I said before, it's one thing: this interconnectedness it exists um, in South Africa or in another. Uh, uh, communities, if you're talking about a village, town, a country, but it's also we are a global community. So if I, if you say that you are because of who we are, so it's more clear today and expanded that everyone will come and say, I am who I am because I am part of this global community. So it exists. You can, Ubuntu is inspiring and helps you see this way. 
you can see it through Christianity, you can see it other, uh, through other religions, and I'm not aware of all the indigenous wisdom you have in the world or all the religions. Um, but it's, it, it's, it can be said in many ways. It, like uh, humans also sometimes intuitive, intuitively have this, uh, you can learn a lot from indigenous wisdom and relate to it also through modern uh, or other sciences and uh, modern philosophy and so on. So we are today who we are and I am who I am because of my a global, uh, if, because of our global community. So even everyone uh, who is like uh, in Hawaii or me here in Vienna or someone uh, in Athens or uh, in Jordan or wherever he is, who is because of this inter, inter interaction with the global community. Uh, if, we so, can only, if we can only find the universality of that thought, <clears throat> because that is not really consistent with what happens in many places in the world. Uh, you know, there's a movie by Ai Weiwei called uh, Human Flow. Uh, and this is a movie now four or five years old, but it, it speaks of uh, 65 million people behind barbed wire somewhere in the world and growing all the time in a sort of seventh circle kind of experience. Um, you know, I, I would like to feel connected with them and I would like to feel they are connected with me. But in the middle, there's barbed wire. It's very troubling. And I want to ask you, we have a few minutes left, actually, Arwa, and I want to ask you one question that came up in when, in when I looked at the Ubuntu philosophy, <clears throat> and that's this. Um, query whether Ubuntu is, um, is influential all over Africa, not only in South Africa, but in you know, Central Africa, East Africa, West Africa, even North Africa. Um, whether people think of it, whether people live by it, and, and so forth. And, and that's half of my question. The other half is one of the most interesting aspects of Ubuntu is that it's post-colonial and that it, has, it, it is a continuation of the strength that people gained in breaking away from colonial relationships, colonialism. And I wonder if you can talk to me about that too. So first talk to me about how influential it is in all of Africa and for that matter, the Middle East and talk to me about how it relates to colonialism. Uh, is it a way to deal with the, the damage created by colonialism or not? Well, uh, Middle East and Africa are, are not the same. Um, and how influential, it's always depends on the people who try to focus on this potential of uh, seeing the good way and the, the opportunity uh, to, to move uh, and see things through these uh, values. and. We're living in the world that most of our uh, values are not uh, coming from uh, uh, um, moral perspectives, but we value more um, other things uh, like money and so on. Uh, and colonialism was also driven by this. So when you wanted to um, resist colonialism so you 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 usually resist it and the local communities resist it through uh, uh, values and so on that contradict uh, the value on other things uh, like the human rights of the uh, local communities uh, their culture their uniqueness their right to determine their uh, uh, lives and so on and their uh, to determine the right to self-determination and so on um, so it values another thing, uh, and uh, it. And we're talking today about globalization. Most of the world values on other things, but eventually, as I said before, we are de facto interconnected. And if, if we look, for example, at Corona, you see how physically, like you have the physical consequences of this interconnectedness like people are feeling it in their bodies and in their pockets and so on. I'm not talking about the spiritual level or uh, the, the, the value levels and so on. So de facto, that's what's going on. We are interconnected. Um, so, and 
it can be also a way of um, seeing as transitional global justice because like we're still uh, in relation to colonialism we are still not seeing uh, uh, people, colonized nations are still paying uh, the price of colonialism and they are uh, still affected by it. So it's also a good way to see that eventually who they are is affected by colonialism, by this uh, global uh, interaction and what happened through colon colonialism. And it, it can be a good way to facilitate some kind of, it is very uh, idealistic and so on, uh, but we, when we work in human rights, we try, we, we value these things, we, we value the people, we, we, we value the moral, like the, the moral aspects and, and so on. Uh, uh, we, we don't value weapons and we don't value uh, uh, money and trade and so on. And it's very challenging today to, to, to uh, to, to, to value uh, a people and uh, their dignity. Uh, and eventually also through international trade and so on, which also is a continuation of colonialism uh, and transnational cooperation and so on. People are actually affected everywhere by like, if you put sugar in your coffee in the morning, you don't know where it came from. And if it came from uh, planting a peeled sugar uh, in Africa while evacuating the indigenous people and uh, doing some kind of atrocities while evacuating them. So eventually we are interconnected and we are still uh, uh, um, uh, going through uh, another kind of uh, colonialism. And I think Ubuntu can uh, be a way to see how we as a global community uh, needs to have need to uh, look at the suffering of other people and see it as our suffering uh, and to try to facilitate some kind of a, a global a transitional justice after colonialism and if we say that uh, um, it ended and it's not affecting the people anymore we lie to ourselves because people are still paying the price of colonialism so this, I hope I answered also your yes, question. Yes, not only did you answer it, but I agree with what you said. Uh, you know, you know uh, just a, a couple of other thoughts before we go, and that is, uh, um, you know, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission uh, had to make a record, just as they had to make a record in Nuremberg uh, in the war trials after World War II. And they did make a record. And there's an enormous amount of material that came out of those trials. And there's an enormous amount of material that came out of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, not only in South Africa, but elsewhere. To me, that's one of the benefits of having a commission like that, is that not only do you hear the evidence and, and um, you know, educate people at the time, um, make it public, but you also keep a record for later. And because, you know, the, the, uh, the, the byword is always never again. A lot of people feel that never again is happening again. Um, in Europe, where you live right now, not necessarily in Vienna, but in other places around Europe, that is an emerging right wing um, that are reminiscent of the 30s. Um, and, um, you know, never again could get to be again. And so, uh, although we don't have the time to talk about that now, I was telling you about a movie that I saw that really struck me called Je suis Carl which is a story of uh, young people in various cities in Europe uh, be, being swept into that right-wing movement right now, mostly against uh, migrants from the Middle East, from Africa. Uh, and if you have the time later, I would like to have a discussion with you, another show, if you don't mind, Arwa, um, where we could talk about your observation in Vienna and your understanding the way things are working uh, in Europe and whether the principles of Ubuntu would be useful <laughs> in dealing with this in Europe. <laughs> we, we don't want to have another Nuremberg, do we? <laughs> anyway, what are your thoughts you want to leave with people today about Ubuntu um, and your work um, you know, in, in looking at it? Sorry, can you repeat the question? I didn't understand. What are your thoughts? What, you, what message do you want to leave with people about your work and your understanding of Ubuntu in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa? Yeah, uh, 
I think people like Jasmine Tutu, Biko, uh, Nelson Mandela are very inspirational and they were able to influence uh, their people with their uh, belief and commitment uh, to humanity and uh, uh, the dignity of each person. Um, so if you take this um, um, way of thinking uh, uh, with you in, in everything, I, I think it's, it's really important um and uh, when you appreciate your humanity through others it also helps you to uh, um, live in a more peaceful community uh, and uh, it's 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 very it sounds very idealistic today and uh, since as you said the, the world is moving in uh, uh, different directions but we, we always have to keep this commitment and this belief and uh, that's people who usually work in human rights and choose to work in this field have this solid commitment and they can have it through Ubuntu or through human rights and other people may have it through religions um, but eventually you always have to see the good part of it and to stick to it um, yeah yeah strikes me that we could use a little more Ubuntu here in the United States don't you think these days <laughs> Everyone can use it more because it it just it respects humanity and it it it, it says to you that the original the authentic self of you is 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 a, is a very good version of humanity and you always have to uh, be committed to it through your what you do and how it affects other people and it can be related to your interactions in your small community your family. Your wider community and as i tried to say before it also if you look at, at, at ourselves as a global community uh, it's also a good way uh, uh, to, to see it especially when we're talking uh, about the uh, international uh, movement of commodities and so on and how, how it's it affect, how we actually affect in our acts other people in other places in a way that we are usually not so aware of it but eventually in everything we do we are affecting and affected so well we're talking about a lot of the third person uh and i just have one last question for you do, do you live your life in accordance with the principles of uh ubuntu uh, I actually, it, it wasn't as it wasn't called as Ubuntu for me, um, but as I said before, it's it's one essence, and you can reach it from different ways. You you can reach it from human rights. You can reach it through religions, and so on. And for me, I I try to, uh, but eventually we we have our weaknesses and limitations. But uh, it's something I think you you should aim to. Even if it was not defined as Ubuntu, I always believed in this interconnectedness between people. Even Einstein also said it. It's an illusion. It's an optical illusion uh, that uh, we are separated, but eventually we are inter interconnected in a way. And if, if we believe in it, and if, if we actually realize it, and I think Corona manifests it, uh, that we are affecting and affected. So it, it gives you more responsibility to act uh, in a way uh, and to think about the consequences of your acts and you, you you focused on the negative things that's going on but another positive things are going on too and the realization and the need of fair trade is more people are are more aware of it and in another ways it, it's becoming people are more aware of it today yeah, and uh, the need of uh, uh, appreciating this connect interconnectedness maybe it, they are phrasing it in human rights language, um, but it can be phrased in many ways. And Ubuntu is one of the ways that people can look at it. And every culture has its way, its way and uh, uh, to look at these people, uh, uh, to, to look at these issues. Arwa Hillel, who joins us from uh, Vienna, who's with Project Expedite Justice and a, a PhD candidate uh, on the question of Ubuntu in South Africa and elsewhere. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you. But my, my, I'm not candidate on Ubuntu. I am interested in Ubuntu. Of course. Uh, thank you. Understood. <laughs> thank you, Arwa.